<clears throat> All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of how to find great stocks and build a winning portfolio. Presenting today is Nick Webb, Senior Vice President at Chaken Analytics. Throughout our presentation, please submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now, before we introduce our presenter, we have Mark Chaikin with us to get us started. Mark, take it away. Thank you, Joe, and welcome, everybody. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce uh, today's webinar presenter, Nick Webb. Nick joined Chaikin Analytics as Executive Vice President in January after a successful 25-year career working with portfolio managers and Wall Street analysts. Uh, today, he's going to share the insights and build on those insights that he gleaned uh, 25 years of working with successful investors and show you how he uses the Chaikin Power Gauge and the other tools in Chaikin Analytics to help find winning stocks. And this applies to both traders and investors because uh, building a winning portfolio uh, at the end of the day means finding strong stocks. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce today's webinar presenter, Nick Webb. Yes? Okay, great. Uh, so I'm delighted to be here on a blazing hot day in Philadelphia. Uh, although I hear that there are snowstorms in the Midwest, so kind of a very strange day overall. Uh, the objective of today's session, and it should last about an hour, is really take a look at what we can do as investors to build a winning portfolio. And the, the goal is to make everyone a better investor by the time they walk out of here in an hour, which, if we're successful, would be an hour well spent. So, with that, let me spend a little time. I know Mark uh, introduced me, but uh, I'm going to go through it a little bit so that people get a clear view of who I am. I mean, handsome devil that that is. Uh, I've been in the financial services for 30 years, uh, working first with a firm called DRI, which was a more of an economic uh, forecasting firm, forecasting the data. Then I worked for a firm called Baseline Financial, which was a equity research tool. This is where I went and spent an awful lot of time with the buy side money managers. Um, and then finally, I got merged into Thomson Reuters and was, again, working all over uh, not only the U.S., Latin America, and Europe. Uh, so I've seen money managers virtually in four or five continents at this point. Um, and throughout this, I've been working with them to help them to develop better investing techniques. And I've got to say, working with them, you work with some of the smartest institutional investors that are out there, you pick up a lot from the clients. I've got to say, rather than me introducing techniques to them, they were really educating me. So I've had a wonderful background working with uh, money managers and really understanding what makes them tick, how they're getting their performance. And you really get a sense for which ones are well worth the effort and are really taking a lot of time and putting the effort into building a great portfolio, which ones are just getting lucky. And in general, I think what this presentation is, is a synthesis of all I've picked up over this, these years. So without further ado, little talk about my evolution. You know, when you graduate college, you're sort of in the efficient markets. You take the, uh, you read the Burton Malkiel's random walk down Wall Street where they say that nobody can beat the market, uh, you know, that you have a better chance uh, by throwing a monkey, throwing charts again, uh, darts against a uh, newspaper pinned on a wall. Um, and then you see somebody like Peter Lynch at Fidelity Magellan who uses a story driven investing technique to just blow the market out year after year. I mean, just sensational performance. Um, but the story behind Peter is, you know, literally he could not maintain that. The amount of effort that took to, to keep that performance going was almost unsustainable. And so 
then you look to the next set of investors where there's a better chance of year after year beating performance. And that was the fundamentals guys, the guys that really got in and understood what was uh, driving uh, performance and they would get into the price earnings and peg ratios and all of that. And, and during my baseline years, I was really working with a lot of the managers that were fundamentally driven and they were having a lot of success out there. And then you start looking at the, uh, you know, the, the Graham and Dodd type people, the, uh, you know, Warren Buffett's of this world who use intrinsic value. And eventually, the only way as an individual investor you can keep up with all of this is by working with a quantitative model, something that is that will objectively assess a stock, provide an assessment on over 5,000 equities, and provide that to you on a regular basis so that you don't have to go in and individually drill into all these stocks to find out which ones have good positive potential. Um, so as an investor, I've finally ended up in quantitative models as the way to achieve regular, sustained, repeated, objective performance. Um, and so that's, that's where I've ended up after all these years. Uh, very strange. So that's why it was great when I essentially ended up at Chaikin Analytics, because that's what we do here. Um, one of the, the hallmarks of all of these investment styles, though, is, you know, it, they had a focused, repeatable process. Uh, so even when it was Peter Lynch, he was well focused. He had a way of getting in in the morning, taking a look at what was hot. He spent his weekends going trawling through uh, shopping malls looking for the next best investment idea. Um, there, there just is so much noise out there in the world that you have to have a focus process. So what I'm going to try and do is in the next hour is work through that focus uh, of how I focus on keeping out all the noise, really focus on what's important and deliver a process that, again, will be repeatable that you can use over and over again. So... Moving on to the next slide. This is going to be a different, for those of you that go to a lot of Chaikin webinars or go to a lot of other webinars, this is just a little different than the uh, normal webinars. It, if you've gone to a Mark Chaikin webinar, you've learned more about stock selection than I'll ever train you. He is uh, a master at this. Um, and there's others that, that certainly we work with from a partner point of view. So, what this webinar really tries to focus is the entire investment process, all the way from, we'll spend some time on stock selection because it is so important. Um, it's kind of the sexy part of uh, equity research and, and investments. Um, but some of the other parts are equally as important and really in terms of keeping your wealth are vastly more important. So one of them is portfolio construction. And we'll take a look at how you build a portfolio that doesn't fall over in particular market conditions. And frankly, it helps you sleep better at night because it's more safe. Uh, so we'll spend a little time on that. We'll take a look at the various things that you as an investor should be monitoring on a regular basis so you're aware of what's going on with your portfolio. And we'll take a look at some techniques that'll help you do that without spending your entire day in front of a a computer because frankly investing should be fun should be easy should be uh, allow you to have a life outside of investing so we'll talk about what uh, what you really do need to focus on in terms of monitoring so that you're not spending all your day taking a look at CNBC and all the computer screens but you really just focus on the key elements and then finally one of the things that's very very tough for investors uh, and this goes for the pros as well as for the individuals. Uh, I, I can't tell you the number of people that get wed to a particular stock and end up holding on to it too long. So we're going to try and begin setting up a cell discipline uh, as part of this webinar. So, so that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend about equal amounts of time on all of these things. Uh, and I know selection is the sexy part, but the other parts are equally as important.
So let's talk about the overall workflow. As you start off, you go through a stock selection process. And again, what I'm gonna recommend is that you pick stocks with a very repeatable objective process. And we'll go through that uh, in this webinar. Next thing is, as you're sort of selecting these stocks, you need to construct a portfolio. And you need to think about individual stocks, not only for their potential value, but how they work within your portfolio. Because again, applying some certain techniques, you can, you can achieve the same results but you can improve your risk profile so that you're much safer. And again, if, if there's a down market or if there's a particular sector that gets hit for whatever reason, you know, a good example of that is healthcare uh, with the upcoming uh, Trump care and whether Obamacare lasts, you know, the, the healthcare industry sort of is buffeting up and down. Um, so it's important not to have all your eggs in that one basket. Um, being exposed to it is good. Being overly exposed to something like that is not good. Um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we're not going to cover trading in this, but I'm sure that all of you have advisors or brokers or online brokerage accounts that you can work with. Um, but then once you've selected your stocks, constructed the portfolio, traded, got it all set, now the day next day you've got to start monitoring that portfolio and using tools to keep track of that and then finally you execute and sell out of those uh, stocks and what's important to remember is until you actually sell everything is a paper profit you haven't actually banked any profits so if it makes you feel any better selling out of an old favorite stock think about it as you're banking the profits at that point um, it does help you because, again, we all get emotional, we get tied to our stocks, um, but it's important that we move in and out of them. So, a little quick look at my process. Uh, I start from the top down. I want to put the wind in my sails. I want to get the right bullish sectors and industries. Um, when I worked with Federated Investments in Pittsburgh, they they clearly said that if you get the right sectors, you have, that is 66% of what guarantees your return. So spending time on a top-down analysis, making sure you're putting the right bets on whether it's a sector or an industry, getting the right bets in there is really going to supercharge your re results. From there, the next step is finding great stocks. And here at Chaken Analytics, we have a quantitative model. It, it makes it very objective, um, and we recommend using the Chaken Power Gauge, and we'll go through that, why it's so important. But there's a process to finding great stocks. We'll take you through that. Um, and then finally, we're going to get greedy, and we're going to sort of say it's not enough to just pick great stocks and great sectors, but we want to use... Uh, entry and exit points in such a way that we we improve our results. So we'll again we'll spend a little time on that, um, and then once we've done all that, we've made our selections. We're going to work on staying on top of the portfolio, and then ultimately we're going to create a sell discipline that have, helps you avoid landmines. Now, if we do all this, this is what a true institutional manager goes through on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, if you think about it, they're spending all day uh, going through this process. And that's simply not a uh, manageable amount of time for all of you. So one of the things we're going to spend a lot of time talking about is how to save time and how to do things efficiently and effectively so that you can have a life in addition to investing. So, next slide. Whoops, there, keeps What's going. There we go. So this is a good time to introduce you to the Chaken Power Gauge. Um, basically, the Power Gauge is a model that's very simple. It, it basically tells you whether a stock is very bullish, bullish, neutral, bearish, or very bearish. 
Um, and it does it based on analyzing each individual stock on a 20 factor basis. So there's a quantitative model that's behind that's incredibly powerful. But the good news is you don't have to spend all that time yourself. The model is back there doing it for you. And ultimately all it does is spit out whether it's bullish or neutral or whatever the rating is. Um, and so that, you know, if you have confidence in what the model is doing in the back end, you can have confidence in that it's gone through and analyzed the stock. Um, again, it's very objective. It doesn't get swayed by, you know, the latest stock tip from your dentist. Uh, it has a completely unbiased process. Uh, it also has a tremendous track record, which we will talk about. Um, and finally, it, it's a great model because it not only combines fundamentals, but it also adds in a little technical flavor as well. So it's one of the few models I've seen that actually does that. It's 85% fundamental driven and 15% technical driven. Um, one of the absolute rock stars in the trading game, John Carter, calls it an objective awesome meter for stocks. Uh, they use it there all the time. They talk about it in their trading rooms. Uh, and they use it as one of the real important things that are going on in their, uh, their models and, and the way that they select stocks. So I kind of feel if it's good enough for uh, John Carter, it's good enough for all of us. Um, so let's get to it. What is the power gauge rating? Um, it really is a clear summary of a stock potential. It's supposed to give you a look three to six months out. It com these are the 20 factors. It's broken into four components. Financials, which are things like long-term debt to equity or return on equity or price to sales ratio. These are the typical fundamental values that, that analysts look at. Um, usually if they're value driven and then you've got earnings and things like, you know, is it beating the estimates? Does it have good growth? What's the trend on it? What's the projected PE ratio? What are you spending for that growth? Which is what PE tells you. And then how consistent is that earnings? Um, go over to technicals. Like I said, it's only 15%, but there's a lot of good technical indicators in there that will identify the right stocks. And then finally, the experts, what's the earnings estimate trend? Uh, what's short interest? Is, is there a lot of short interest on the market? What's insider activity? You know, are the insiders, the uh, executives of the company buying the stock? Um, so one of the items that, that's highlighted here, the earnings surprise, had an interesting story. When I got here, or sort of two months after I got here, I challenged Mark. Mark Chaikin, because I said, you know, you built this, this quantitative model. To me, earnings surprise is something that can be uh, rigged by the companies. You know, they, the uh, earnings surprise basically tells you when earnings beat the estimates. And usually it focuses on the, the quarter that's, that's uh, right in play. Um, and so what happens, or what companies have been known to do, is they essentially whisper out to the analysts, hey, we're gonna be a little short this quarter. And so they essentially bring the estimates down. Now there's some short-term pain for the company when they bring the estimates down. But what happens then is they then report earnings and lo and behold, they're a penny above the, the estimates. And so they essentially beat earnings and have a positive earnings surprise. And this is not uncommon in the uh, financial world at all. Um, so I challenged Mark and I said, you know, this goes on, earnings surprise, very easy to fool, you know, and, and here it is in the model. And Mark just turns to me a little smile and says, you know what, you don't think we thought of that? Um, so earnings surprise is actually a five quarter look ahead. And so it's, it's actually beating earnings five quarters in advance, which is a much more difficult measure for companies to uh, manufacturer, and it really does measure how well companies are living up to the estimates. So the only reason I told you that story is that, you know, there's 20 factors here, and each one of those factors has been lovingly created and really uh, groomed and massaged 
so that they give you an accurate portrayal of that company's performance. And that's what's so important. All that data is being massaged in the back. And all you have to do is come over here and look at the power gauge and realize, ah, LAM research is very bullish. And you can have faith that the financials look good, the earnings, the technicals, and the experts all line up to make LAM research a very bullish stock. Of course, that was back May 16th. Now we're in, you know, May 17th or 18th. So, you know, who knows? Um, anyway, so does the model work? And the answer to that is absolutely. Um, this is a great chart because it takes a look at the power gauge performance light to date. If you look at this bar over here, this basically tells you that if all you did, if your entire stock selection process was just picking very bullish shaken stocks, you would have a life to date, and that's from 1999 all the way up to the end of 2016, you'd have an annual return of 20.3%. Okay? The average stock over that time period was 9% return. So again, if all you did, and you could do this in like one minute a day, if all you did was just choose very bullish chicken stocks, you would be doubling the average stock performance. Now, there's been a lot of press out talking about how active money management firms aren't able to beat the indexes, right? And so there's a, a real case to be going out and doing passive indexes. Um, but here you can see using a quantitative model, again, very objective, reliable, it's going to beat the performance two to one. So pretty solid. That's an, those are extraordinary results and it should give you confidence in using that power gauge rating. But this chart is the one that sold me on Chaken Analytics. About a year ago, I was sitting over in London trying to figure out where my next role was going to be. And I started researching this company, Chaken Analytics, because it had been brought to my attention. And, you know, I, I did, got on the website, I did some research, it really sounded good. I love the, the thesis that it was, that Chaken Analytics wanted to provide the ind individual investor institutional quality tools. Um, and then I got on, and this is actually a chart from Google Finance. And what I did is I, uh, Chaken came out with NASDAQ indexes back in 2014. And basically what we do is we give NASDAQ, you know, the, um, the stocks, they create the index, we keep those stocks permanent for a full, full year, and then we give them another batch of stocks to put in, to construct an index. And so this essentially allows us to see what is, you know, can, can Chaken beat the indexes? So, so this index has been out there since 2014, um, and I charted it. It's the NASDAQ US small cap index. You can see the, the uh, ticker up above, and I charted it relative to the Russell 2000 index uh, ETF. Now, the Russell 2000 ETF index, uh, the one I chose, has billions and billions of dollars. It's a passive index. It's the one probably most people go into when they want access to a small cap index. And you can see here, they're absolute, we absolutely, the blue line is the Chaken index, the red line is the Russell 2000, and we've doubled the performance over the last three years again. Um, so this is not you know, coincidence. You can see the, the bars widen out every year. So, so this is repeatable performance that's beating the index. And it gives you confidence that the chicken power gauge works and it's easy to deploy. So, so let's, let's take a step back and remember that we wanted to get a top down direction in terms of investing. Um, so how do you do that? Uh, the picture, by the way, is Admiral Peary in uh, his 1909 expedition. Um, he, after 23 years of work, 
he was able to uh, visit, get all the way up to the North Pole with an expedition. Uh, he probably had two or three missed uh, explorations. And essentially, for, for 50 years, everybody assumed that he had gotten to the, the actual North Pole. Um, 50 years later, when we had satellite imagery, we realized he uh, ended up 50 miles short of the North Pole, um, which tells you it's hard to get a good top-down direction. But again, shaken analytics will help you do that. So let's talk about how you do it. These are some charts that come directly from shaken analytics. Um, and if you look at the money flow, shaken money flow, which tracks institutional money for the S&P 500, you can see there's money flowing into the S&P 500. So that's a very positive sign. It says institutions are still investing in the S&P 500 in fairly prodigious amounts. You know, when it starts getting into these red areas, that's when you have to really worry that maybe the market's getting tired, that people are starting to withdraw their money. The next thing I did, and I'll talk about Power Bar in a little bit, but basically Power Bar, all it does is it takes a look at all the stocks in the S&P 500 and tells you how many of them are bullish, 70, and how many of them are bearish and how many of them are neutral. There's an awful lot in the neutral category right now. But this is beginning to show a little bit of uh, alarm. There, you know, there's a, there's a little cause for concern. It's not, you know, flaming red right now, but it's definitely cause for concern. Um, and then finally, you just take a look at the relative performance, uh, you know, S and P versus the market, and make sure that uh, the large cap stocks are outperforming the entire market basket, so that uh, you know. Again, money's flowing into the big stocks. When all that's going on, you feel relatively confident that the market's in good shape. This would be the one thing to keep an eye on uh, going forward. And there's a lot of people that are out there talking about whether the market has sort of peaked. You know, that it's been a nice rally. I mean, nobody's complaining about a good 25% rally. Um, but, you know, maybe that means that it's time for a retrenchment, a fall. Um, but Citibank Research did, did some work and they took a look at the last 72 times that the market's been up by 25% in the prior 12 months. And so they found 72 instances of it. What's interesting is 36 out of the 72 times, so almost half the time or exactly half the time, the market had double digit gains that averaged 25%. About a quarter of the time, they had single-digit gains, so about 5%. And about a quarter of the time, they fell. So it's not just the fact that the market's up by 25% does not mean that we're ready for a fall. As a matter of fact, most likely, we're probably somewhere in this vicinity in the next near future. So... What does the sort of market trends tell you? Well, if you think about it, we've, we've had some really positive uh, market dynamics. We've had falling rates and rising earnings, really starting from right after the 2008 crash. So you could see for the first five years, it was really a good time to be in stocks. 2015 was a little bit more bearish as there were falling rates, but uh, falling earnings as well. For the last couple of years, including this year, we're kind of in a better phase. Yes, the rates are going up, although they're not going up as fast as people thought, certainly on the long side, and, but earnings are growing. So that's, that's not a bad scenario for stocks. So overall, you know, if the earnings can keep track and bring down some valuations, that will, will bode incredibly well for the stock market. So we talked about interest rates rising again, Short term right now, long term, it hasn't really happened yet. But what happens when interest rates are rising? What sectors benefit? And again, this is beginning to think about from a top-down perspective, where do I want to be placing my bets? And you can see there's certain industries or certain sectors that do incredibly well in interest rate rising environments. Financials is kind of obvious. Um, you know, if you're investing in a bank and everybody knows their savings and loan right now is, you know, at best giving you 1%, 
if all of a sudden they can turn around and loan that money out in an interest rate rising environment, they're essentially pocketing that difference. And, you know, they'll, they'll try and hold off giving interest rates increases to their consumers while they ratchet up their loan prices. And so their, their margins are going to increase dramatically. So the financials typically do very well in a rising interest rate environment. Um, and some of these others, technology, again, if, if interest rates are rising, most likely that means that it's tough to get good labor. So technology begins to rise. So again, there's certain sectors that you can sort of, you know, you can write a script that they're going to do better in, in performance uh, in interest rate rising times. So it's not all that surprising when you go into Chaikin Analytics in our sector and ETFs window, you take a look at the S&P sectors, which ones are showing up with the exception of utilities, which is kind of an outlier. So I'm going to pass by utilities, but mainly because there's only seven bullish stocks. So, uh, you know, they, and they got be so beaten down in the 2008 to 2014 period. But if you look, the ones that you would expect, healthcare, technology, and financials are all there. They've got more bullish stocks than bearish stocks. And you can see how they've performed over the last seven months. Pretty much everybody's up with the exception of energy. But the industries are even more interesting. So industries are the subsectors. And so it goes down a level in terms of granularity. And here, there's some really interesting industries that we should be looking at. For example, home builders. There, you know, if you look at it, there's 12 bullish stocks and there's not a bad stock in the bunch. So it's almost impossible to buy a bad home builder right now, home building stock. Couple of the others, innovative technology. Again, you can make a case it's so obvious as to why their services are going to be in demand. And again, you can see that there's far more bullish stocks than bearish stocks. I can't tell you how great a view this is. If you're investing and you want to get a top down performance or a top down look, these displays really give it to you in a very succinct way. It really helps you zone in on where you want to be investing. And, and uh, so it'll help us when we start into our stock selection, which is where we're going next. So we've gotten a top-down view. We've got a couple industries we're really interested in, home building, technology stocks. So what do we do with that information? Well, now we have to go and pick individual stocks. And you know, the important thing is, we don't want to be the guy that's throwing darts at the, uh, the, the stock listings. We want to be far more selective and we want to hit the bullseyes. So how do you do that? Well, again, you go back and you, you say, I want to identify the right sectors and industries. That's, you know, we've already done that. We've, we've already done that sort of top-down analysis. Then we want to objectively select the best stocks. And you know how you do that? You use a well, oh, maybe a, a quantitative model that helps you do that with an unbiased rating on stocks. Um, and then we want to get a little greedy by using indicators to pick good entry and exit points that'll help us, you know, squeeze an extra percent or two out of uh, our performance by, by avoiding, you know, momentary blips down and really focus on the ones that are just about ready to, to have a nice move upwards. And if we do that, uh, we will absolutely beat the benchmarks. You saw the performance that we got on the NASDAQ indexes. And if we follow this sort of three-step easy process, you can see how quickly we can beat the markets. So, and if you hear from one of the best investors in the world, one of the things he says is they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street. So you don't have to swing at everything. You, you just want to wait for your pitch. And what that means in investing is there's 5,000 stocks out there. You don't have to settle for any mediocre fundamentals or anything like that. You can pick the exact right stock. And you know what? If it's not right right now, you can wait and there will be stocks that come around uh, and you will have something that you, again, with 5,000 stocks, you'll find investment opportunities. So the important thing is you don't settle you make sure that you wait for your pitch and then you swing. 
So what do you do? Well, we call it the Chaikin Classic Bowl. And really what that means is that the power gauge rating that you'll see in, in Chaikin Analytics is very bullish. That's, you know, again, if you go back, if all you do is that, you will double market performance or you have in the past. Um, the next thing you do is you look at relative strength, you know, because we want to pick stocks that actually are outperforming the market. Now we don't picking turnarounds are, is very tough. So finding the stocks that are outperforming uh, the industry is really strong. And then the last thing really important, you want to find ones that have good shaken money flow. What does shaken money flow mean? That money flow tracks institutional investing. So, and obviously institutions dwarf individual investors. So when money is flowing into a stock from institutions, that gives it legs, it gives it momentum. It's swimming with the tide as opposed to swimming against the tide. And that's really important. So again, you get these three things right and you're gonna find some great stocks. So how do you do that? Or what does that look like? Here's a good example of a stock that meets that definition. KBH Home. Well, why does it meet that definition? Let's go through it. First of all, it's that strong industry. If you remember when we went down from the top down approach, uh, the construction and home building industry was, was extremely strong. Um, so that's a good industry to be in. So I feel good about that. I come over here and I look at the very bullish power gauge rating and I know I'm onto something. I've got a stock that I really like. I then go down to money flow, absolutely strong. I go down to relative strength, looks great. This is a stock I can get behind. And just as a added bonus, if you look at the earnings and announcements, what we do here is we actually put uh, a little insignia that says EPS, that's when they announced earnings. And if it's green, they beat earnings. They had positive earnings surprise. If it's red, it's a negative earnings surprise. And so, I, you know, just as an added bonus on top of everything else we're screening for, it looks like they've got a real positive track record of regularly beating earnings surprise. Um, and you can sort of see after they beat earnings surprise, they get a nice little kick up, you know? So, so that's, a, uh, that's a very positive looking stock. And guess what? We just analyzed the stock by staying and looking at one screen and one screen only. Everything's here for you to see, which is great. It makes it very easy to do the work behind selecting stocks. So how do you find stocks like this? Well, you screen for them. So again, remember, this is a, the stock screening within Chaikin Analytics. You can see we put in that we want a very bullish power gauge rating. We want industry relative strength to be strong. We want uh, money flow to be strong. We want relative strength to be strong. So we want strong industries and strong stocks within that industry. So if you do all of that, you're going to find some pretty good stocks. So the, like this little miner guy over here, you know, he's sifting out all the, the sand and he ends up with the nuggets of gold. And that's what we'll do here. So when I run this screen and check in analytics, this is what I came back with. And it's how I found KB Homes, just, you know, by the way. So if you look at KB Homes, or you look at the results of the screener, there, there's 18 stocks. And you can see Applied Materials, which again is probably in the, uh, uh, the technology area. You can see a lot of stocks that look really, really good. MDC is also in the home building industry. But here's KB Homes. And I knew that it was in the construction industry. So that got me very interested in it. So one of the things we do at Chaikin Analytics is we allow you to discover what are the adjacent stocks to this that have very similar characteristics to KB Homes so that you can study, well, maybe I want KB Homes, but what else looks like KB Homes out there in the market? We call that discovery and we have a discovery window in, in the product. And so when you put in KB Homes, you can see it comes back with a series of recommendations of other stocks that are in the same sector, have the same characteristics, i.e. they're small cap, they've got strong free cash, flash, sorry, free cash flow. Um, and so 
you can see there's five of them here that are very interesting stocks. Actually, one of them, uh, Richmond Homes, was actually on the prior screen. So it had shown up in that screen as well. So some really interesting uh, stocks and allows me to go in and sort of do a little research on them. What I'm gonna do now, again, remember the, the third part is I'm gonna get greedy and I'm gonna try and get a little extra return by getting some good timing indicators. And you know, if you look at, we, we provide a number of different signals that you can add to your price chart. Um, but the ones that really sort of have resonance are the oversold buy and the overbought sell, as well as the relative strength buy and relative strength sell. The oversold buy, if you can find one of those, that means it's got real good potential in the next week or two. It's got a nice short-term potential. And if you've got one that's got a relative strength buy, well, that's got potential that's got more longer-term legs, like four to six weeks. Um, may not be as dynamic as the oversold, but again, it's got good four to six week kind of uh, trend. So I'm greedy. Not only do I want to pick great stocks and great industries, but I want to get them right at a good turning point. So again, uh, here is MDC. And here are some, you can see it's got some buy indicators. This is the relative strength buys. So again, remember relative strength buys, which is what these uh, green up arrows are, those have more of a four to six week uh, time period. And you can see what happens after, after one of these hits, it gets a nice run. One of these hits, it gets a nice run. So there's one right now that's uh, probably on its uh, latter part of its legs. Uh, so probably not the right stock. Oops. Um, but here's KB Homes, and you can see this is an oversold buy. So shorter time period, but more recent. And you can see after each one, it's got a nice little run up. So after each timing indicator comes out, you get a nice run out, or most of the time. I mean, no indicator is ever infallible. So if I wanna, again, put the odds in my favor and get a little greedy, finding these timing arrows would lend me to look at KB Homes and sort of say, this might be a really good stock to add to my portfolio. Uh, and here's one more, uh, Lamb Research, which also showed up in this, the screen. And again, you can see just as those oversold buys hit, has a nice run up. So these are the types of stocks that I would think are great for my portfolio. So again, let's go through this because this took all of five minutes to do. We identify the right sectors and industries. We did that top-down analysis. We looked into the sectors and ETFs. We found out which had good power bar ratings, which had a lot of bullish stocks. And then we looked deeper into that, into the industries. And we found several industries that really looked like they had a lot of stocks going in the right direction. Those are the industries that I want to be in. We then objectively used the quant model to select the best stocks. And you saw as a quick screen, didn't take very long, came up with 18 stocks, which is very manageable. You can put those into the, the Chaken workspace and you can roll through those very, very quickly. So, you know, with the chart and find out which ones really give you uh, the right look. And then finally, we threw some indicators on the chart to find when a good entry point was. So doing all that took about five, 10 minutes and came up with several good stocks that I would be very interested in adding to my portfolio. So that's a very quick process. It works. Obviously, if all you do is use the power gauge, you're, you're, you're doubling your odds of good performance. So once you've done that with all the stocks, now it's time to sort of think about, well, as you saw, we've, we, our screen came up with 18 stocks, but what do we want to do in terms of portfolio construction? You know, we certainly don't want to invest in all 18. Are there some that we'd like to invest in for, for portfolio construction reasons that would help in terms of providing a nice, well-diversified portfolio? And what's interesting on portfolio construction comes down to picking great sectors and industries and diversifying them are the hallmarks of a great portfolio and a well-diversified portfolio. So we've already done that work. We've, we've been through the sectors and industries. We know which ones are good. 
Um, and so we're, we're all already halfway there. Um, and diversif diversification can really help you reduce the risk without impacting the returns. And so, you know, if it doesn't take too many stocks in your portfolio, as long as you've got a, a lot of, or four or five different industries, as long as you've done that, you can basically trade higher risk, higher return, still get the higher return, but really lower your risk. And that moves you into that efficient portfolio. This is known as the efficient frontier. Don't need to get into it. Just, it's a great way of understanding what good diversification can do. It can basically, without really hurting your, your return, you can lower your risk, move along this and get into the efficient portfolio. So some quick rules on this. Too many stocks in your portfolio, turn it into an index. So I've seen individual investors that are investing in 50, 60 stocks. It's just too many. Because if you're doing that, you're not able to stay on top of it. Also, you're not picking the best stocks. Far better to pick 10 excellent stocks than 50 good stocks. You'll find that that helps you uh, win. The other thing is you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to sort of say, how much time am I really going to devote to this? Because the more, the, the more time away from monitoring your portfolio, the less stocks you should own. You really should be very clear about how much time you're willing to commit to look at all these stocks on a regular basis and understand what's driving their valuation. So if you're not going to be in there regularly, fewer stocks. Finally, diversify, diversify across five industries. Uh, when I talk to portfolio managers, there used to be a great, um, there still is, a great asset management company called Janus. And then for years, they were outperforming with the Janus 20. Um, and basically, they only held 20 stocks. And the way that they got diversification across those 20 stocks is they made sure that they had five uncorrelated industries, five really distinct and separate industries. And they felt if they got those five right, then they had basically eliminated some of their risk. So that diversification across five industries is a rule you hear over and over and over again. And it's one you should sort of put into your own portfolio. And then the other thing is important is the size matters. You want to have some smalls and you want to have some mid caps in there because there are times where small caps will outperform the larger cap stocks. And so you might as well, again, have that diversification. You do all that and you've got a well diversified portfolio. And once you've got a well-diversified portfolio, it's now time to monitor it and keep an eye on it. Um, so uh, the single most important thing in investing is keeping track of your investments. You know, it seems self-evident, but you would be amazed at how many people sort of haven't looked at their portfolio in two weeks. Uh, or, you know, they invest and then they forget about it. And that there is some some value to doing that a little bit, but it is important to monitor and stay on top of it. Um, you don't want to be there every day, every minute watching it because that's not really what investing is all about, but you do, and it, that's what day trading is about, but you do want to be in there regularly just so that when things change, you're ready to go. So what do you look at? What impacts stocks values? What are, wh what should you be aware of? What should you be looking for? Well, Things that I look at are market moves. You know, I want to know what's going on overall in the market. I want to know what, what's happening with company news. You know, if, if one of my companies is falling out of bed, I need to know about it quickly. Uh, I want to be aware of earnings announcements. Those are probably the single biggest impact on a stock uh, on a regular basis. I want to know about any estimate changes. If Wall Street analysts change their view of my company, that's something I want to know about. And I want to know about price movements. It seems like a long list. It seems a little daunting, but it's not. Because again, Chaikin Analytics can help you out with all of these. Uh, and they do it so that it makes it super easy to follow. Um, we provide a number of newsletters um, to our clients. Uh, one is Market Insights, which is Mark Chaikin's weekly newsletter. It comes out on Sunday night. And it is loaded with insight about what's going on in the market. 
what are some potential areas where he sees opportunities um, and even includes a uh, bullish stock of the week or a bearish stock of the week. So it, it has a lot of value and it's, it's a great read on a Sunday night if you're into stocks. Uh, I am, so it's a great read for me. Uh, the other thing is we also put out uh, a daily insights as well. That's written by John Schlitz. I didn't write it up there, but but the daily insights comes out again, and it it is another great piece that gives you what moved yesterday, what are things that are happening today, what are the estimates that are coming out. It really sort of clues you into the market very very quickly. Our latest daily newsletter is called Power Feed. It's free. Whether you subscribe to Chaken Analytics or not, it's free. It's just a great way to look at what's happening in the market. We call it market in a minute because you can literally, it's very graphic and it basically, uh, basically highlights what's happening in the market, gives you a stock of the day, gives you what's happening at the sector level so that it gives you that top-down look. It basically helps you understand all the market moves and in a minute a day, it gives you everything you need. So great newsletter, highly recommend. By the end of tonight, you, you sign up for it. So company news, all of that's in Chaken Analytics. Earnings announcements are in Chaken Analytics. Estimate changes, all in Chaken Analytics. Price movements and technicals, all those things are sitting in Chaken Analytics. What does that look like in Chaken? We have an alert window. And that alert window is keyed off your portfolio or your watch list or whatever list you have in Chaken. And it gives you, you know, so most investors go to the left side of this table and they want to find out what's good that's happening, what, you know, what stocks are breaking out for them and all that. I always go to the right side of the portfolio. It's what are the things that I have to worry about as an investor that I should take a look at. For example, one of my stocks has turned bearish. That's not a good thing. I'm going to want to look at that stock. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sell it, but I definitely want to look at it and understand why it turned bearish. Um, also, I've got a couple of stocks that have some bearish price movements or keying off some overbought and relative strength sells. Again, remember, if you've got a relative strength sell, that means you're going to have most likely some rough treading for probably four to six weeks. That again is an indication that maybe I've got to take a look at that stock and sort of see, is that a stock I want to be in or is there a better swap for it? Okay. So that is monitoring your portfolio. It's a daily activity. It takes three minutes a day. I can't stress it enough. This is, should not be your lifetime. Read the power feed. That takes a minute. Log into Chaken, look for alerts, and then go enjoy the rest of your day. Don't sit there and agonize over every last move in the market. It'll cause you to react in, in too frequently and you won't increase your results by doing that. So spend three minutes right at market open, understand everything that's going on, and then go enjoy the rest of your day. So what happens when you now have found a stock that has fallen out You've been monitoring it, and now it looks like it's a sell. What do we do? Well, again, going back to the money managers, the ones that are most successful have a great sell discipline. Um, you can see there was an article in Wall Street Journal talking about riches await masters of the selling discipline. There's no question. Getting a good sell discipline helps your returns because it basically banks your profits. As I said early on, you know, you, you don't make a dime on paper profits until you sell it. So you've got to make that sell when it's time. Um, so I, wrote, I read or I put up here what Davis Funds uses their sell discipline. As a general rule, we pair exit investments based on a number of factors, including adverse changes in long-term earnings power, excessive valuation, loss of confidence in management, and opportunities to allocate capital to more compelling investments. One thing I want to stress, selling discipline starts upon purchase. From the day that you buy a stock, you've got to start monitoring it. Make sure it's living up to what you wanted when you purchased that. Understand why you bought that stock. 
you know, was it the bullish rating? Well, what happens when it turns bearish? That probably means that the reason that you bought it is no longer valid. So that is a great time to start thinking about selling it out of your portfolio. The other thing I recommend, and basically when you talk to every positive, well-run money management firm, they set a sell price target when they purchase a stock. And I recommend that you do it as well. In other words, set what you want to get out of that stock purchase, you know, so that you know that if it's up 20 points, that's probably right about where I think it's going to go. Um, it doesn't mean that you actually are going to sell it. But when your stock hits the target, then you want to evaluate that stock to sort of see if it makes sense to go further. So again, um, here, here's another, this is Southeastern Asset Management Cell Discipline. Um, and what's funny is this is what they wrote. And here's how I translate that. Price reaches appraisal and no margin of safety remains. To me, that means price hits your target and there's not really a lot of room for further upside. So that's a good time to sell a stock out. This one's hysterical. The portfolio risk return profile can be substantially improved e.g. replace a business selling at 80% of its worth with an equally attractive company at 40% of its value, which really means there's a better stock out there and it's time to swap it out. Future earnings power becomes severely impaired by threats to its business. Hey, original fundamentals have soured or there's some new competitive threats. Again, using the Chaikin power gauge will really give you a good sense of it because when Condition number three happens. What you'll see going on in the Chaikin power gauge is all of a sudden the analysts will start bringing down their estimates. Earnings will start coming down. There will be a whole bunch of things that are in the background of the Chaikin power gauge rating. And when that changes from bear bullish to bearish, that's a good time to reevaluate the stock and, and most likely sell it. So again, let's review the investor workflow really quick. You know, this is sort of the, the tour of what we've been through tonight. We talked about stock selection, not hard, very repeatable, objective process. Doesn't take a huge amount of effort to find great stocks. We talked about building a diversified portfolio that improves safety, allows you to sleep at night, um, makes that good trade off between risk and reward, you know, a lot more reward, a lot less risk. You're going to trade. You're then going to monitor proactive, active monitoring, really keeping track of what's going on so you don't lose the returns that you've worked so hard to get. And then finally selling, weeding out the stocks and taking the paper profits and turning them into real profits. And that's the wheel that obviously just keeps going around and around. It's very repeatable. This is a process, none of which takes huge amount of time. And you can see from Chaikin, it's really simple when you get a good tool that works on your behalf. You can do all these things very, very easily. And it doesn't take the time. And it doesn't take, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this. This is all very easy to work through, very repeatable. And again, if you follow these steps, you're going to have a very well diversified, reliable portfolio that has excess returns. And that's all you can ask for. The good news is everything in the shaded area is covered by Chaikin Analytics. It helps you do all of these things. So if you go back to my process, you go, you put the wind in your sails with finding good bullish sectors and industries, really understanding which ones are gonna help drive your performance. You find great stocks using the Chaikin Power Gauge. We showed you how that looked like. We get greedy, we improve entry and exit points so that you know we, we're entering stocks right as it's about to make a move, which is phenomenal. There's nothing more thrilling than picking a great stock right as it's about to make a, a move upwards. Then we stay on top of our portfolio. You do that, you're going to make sure that all the hard work that you've put into selecting stocks pays off. And then you avoid landmines that destroy your portfolios by putting in a terrific sell discipline. You do all those things, you're going to do well. So, Here's John Malden, who's a great uh, economist. He's uh, chairman of Malden Economics, which is an influential newsletter 
uh, company that, that puts out multiple newsletters. Um, one of the things he's, he's a huge fan of Chaikin Analytics. And again, this is, you know, these kinds of investors that give Mark the, uh, the Chaikin Analytics, you know, seal of approval, it's, it's really rewarding to, to hear. Um, and those analysts definitely use it because they call Chaikin Analytics support quite a bit. So they're using it and they're using it for their own system. But it doesn't just have to be these rock star traders. Here's an individual user that basically is getting just incredible value from Chaikin Analytics. So again, it's one of the things that this is a product that works for an institutional guy, but it also works for an individual investor. And what's great is it includes everything you need. It's got a stock screener. If you're into options, it's got an option strategy. So you can use Chaikin Analytics to find the uh, overall direction of a stock, you can, whether it's bullish or bearish. And then you can use Options Play, which is a partner of ours, uh, but it's included in the product to essentially set a strategy in, in options to take advantage of that direction. It's got the earnings alerts that we showed you, the intraday charts, and now it's got the discovery engine. So it's really a complete tool, and, and its hallmark is it's very easy to use. You can see up on the top, there's only four areas you can go into. We saw the workspace, we saw the discovery engine, which is right here. We saw the screener, and we saw the sectors and ETFs. There's nothing hidden here. It's very easy to use. Um, and it's all there and it's exactly what you need to run a stock selection process very effectively. And best of all, it just won the Benzinga 2017 uh, Best Trading Idea Platform. So we're really proud of that. We, we, we uh, went up and hauled that back on Thursday, uh, last Thursday, and it's, uh, it's a nice feather in our cap. Um, so how much does all this cost? I'm, you know, at 1950, I, I got to tell you, you know, when I was working at other companies, it was anything like this would have been dramatically more expensive. But here at Chaikin Analytics, you know, we're trying to make it accessible to the individual investor. So usually we charge 1950. But because you've been on the webinar, you've spent an hour with me, we're going to make it 1750 for, uh, for the next three days. Um, and by the way, I've got my friends in our uh, consulting area. They're sticking around. So if you have any questions from tonight's webinar, please feel free to call them. Uh, the number is right here. Um, and they're all good guys. None of them bite. So definitely feel free to call them. Um, you know, and, and one of the things I just want to highlight is the whole team adds value to your subscription. Uh, I can't stress enough the amount of attention we pay to our subscribers with small group tutorials and one-on-one -on -one tutorials, just to make sure that you get set up correctly, you build your, your process that you're comfortable with and you use the right features of Chaikin Analytics. As a matter of fact, one of the things we absolutely will stress, and you'll get a call within the first couple of days uh, telling you to, you know, setting you up for an onboard session, which is an hour long uh, training class, which is tremendous goes through all the features of the product. And basically, after you've had the onboard session, you're, you're armed and dangerous to use Chaikin Analytics and really put together a stock selection process. You also will get the Market Insights weekly newsletter that we talked about, as well as John Slitz, who is our strategist, the Daily Morning Insights newsletter. So again, there's a lot that comes in, in addition to, it's not just the online service, it's all of these other pieces that all, you know, come together to make sure that you're building a wonderful stock selection process. But for today, if you subscribe today, you can get another $100 off. So for a full year of Chicken Analytics with everything that we just described, uh, you can pick it up today for $16.50. Just make sure that you either use this web address when you're uh, going to purchase or just call this number and they can help you with the purchase as well. Either of those two ways works. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, please, I can't stress enough, just call this number, they can help you out. Um, so with that, I just wanna thank everybody for their attention. 
This concludes the webinar and I turn it back to Joe Pacella. All right, Nick, thank you so much. Um, I saw a few comments coming in already um, just regarding how much they enjoyed the presentation. Um, so as Nick just mentioned, uh, 1650 for a full year to check in analytics. Now, the discounted offer here is obviously a great benefit to have, but I think this pairs very nicely with the one last webinar that we are hosting this week. This is just for our own subscribers. It is an onboard session, which brings you up to speed. Um, it's a great way to really establish a daily routine, a daily discipline um, for how you're using the platform uh, with Chaken Analytics. So I always think whenever we host a webinar on a Thursday, um, take advantage of the discounted offer for full year to check in analytics. And just as Nick mentioned, we're going to get you registered for our two o'clock onboard session. Um, so this is a great way to wrap up uh, a pretty volatile week in the market. And so I think it'd be a great way to see how check in analytics can help you stay on top of uh, perhaps uh, some of the events like we've seen this week in the market. Um, so as Nick mentioned, 877-978-6257, or you can make your way to shakenanalytics.com forward slash stocks. Um, in the meantime, thank you all very much for joining us this afternoon. Keep an eye out for the recording. We're going to email this out tomorrow morning. Um, in the meantime, we will see you on tomorrow's onboard session.